and what a great day to sew something wonderful. I'm Kia with Kia B and I'm so excited to be back in the studio with you today. I have a really fun and easy quilting tutorial planned for you. So I am, I, I struggled for a really long time with how to put a quilt block on point. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you how to make this really simple nine patch and turn the block with a background fabric that will turn the quilt block on point. Now what that means is my quilt block originally was square, just like this, and I wanted to turn it on its points. And so I'm gonna show you my method for making this super easy in my studio, and then I'll give you some other resources that you can find online that maybe um, would make your experience easier as well. So why don't you come in a little closer? We will head over to the cutting table and we'll talk about materials that you'll need and this will go together so quickly. So let's take this one stitch at a time. Materials that you're gonna need for today's project are a cutting mat and a rotary cutter and a ruler as, I mean, those are pretty standard in our tutorial so we'll need those three things. I'm gonna use this smaller ruler and then uh, we need a background fabric. So I've chosen just a Bello white solid and this is a charm pack. So you'll need a charm pack and we'll need some yardage. I'm going to show you what the number is to this Bella solid. If you've caught this in the past, I've said a couple of times, I always keep a bolt of this on hand. A lot of quilt shops and um, like I know fat quarter shop will give you a bolt discount if you need a solid. Um, so you just order 15 yards is what the typical bolt is and they'll tell you if it's a different uh, yardage for each bolt. But I just order 15 yards, they give me a discount for ordering an entire bolt and I keep it on hand all the time. That's how I'm able to get a lot of the sew sampler projects done so quickly or if a project just kind of pops in my head and I want to get it done, I've got the yardage to do it. So I'm going to use a charm pack of whatever my background is and some yardage. So make sure you have both of those. So like I said, this is just Bella Solid White. And then you will need a mini charm pack. And I love these. Anything I can use with a mini charm pack, I just think they're the cutest little thing. And today I'm going to use Smitten by Bonnie and Camille. Um, this I used in our recliner quilt. If you saw um, a floss tube a few weeks ago, about a month ago actually, I showed the sofa quilt from a sew sampler box from last year that I made and I made it out of smitten and it is just, this fabric line is beautiful. Like it is just, she is, they are one of my favorite designers and um, I just love that. So I'm gonna use smitten. Okay. The next thing we need to do in making a nine patch, we need our background fabric and to be the exact same size as our mini charm pack. So what does that mean? We're just gonna cut some charm squares um, in two quarters. Okay, so we're gonna cut four. And this tiny ruler is great for that. It's only three and a half by six and a half, and so it fits perfectly on here. And when you're going from the pinked edge, like with these have a pinked edge, you're gonna go the inside, so the, the valley of the triangle. And we're gonna cut these at two and a half, which is basically cutting them in half. And I'm using an endurance blade. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six layers here that I'm gonna be able to cut through like butter. It's not even gonna phase it at all. So we'll get those cut that way and turn it again. You could definitely use a rot rotating cutting mat if you've got one. Line these back up and cut it at two and a half the opposite direction. Okay, and now I've got a stack of white. Now let's throw together a nine patch. This is a very simple quilt block, um, and we're gonna kind of do some, some more simple quilt blocks um, in some coming videos. So let's go ahead and get this set up. What I'm gonna do, like I said, I just want it to be very scrappy. So a nine patch is three by three, making up nine squares. And essentially what that means is we are gonna have five prints and we'll get this set up like this I like that and let's get a red in here like this and then we're gonna have if we have five prints that means we have four solids so this is going to be our background so there we go such a simple little nine patch 
So now what I'm going to do is, and I've showed, shown you this advanced piecing before, but it is going to make your life so much easier when you are doing nine or 12 patch um, quilt blocks. What we're going to do is we're going to work in this row first. And if you remember in our Christmas tutorial with our stockings, we did a bunch of um, little squares, two and a half inch squares together. So we're going to take this and we're going to line our second row up to our first row, just like this. We're gonna take these one by one over to the sewing machine and we're not gonna cut thread between the two. So let me show you. And it's okay, as you can see, this one doesn't quite line up all the way. That's all right, we're gonna trim these down when we get to the end. So get a quarter of an inch seam. And remember, don't break thread. Grab your second set from here and continue over to the sewing machine with a quarter of an inch seam. Again, don't break thread and grab your last set. Okay, now break thread. We're gonna bring all three of these without twisting them or anything. We're gonna bring these back over to our original layout and open them up like this. We'll kind of put these in opposite directions. So the seam is going this way. Now this seam is going to go this way towards the print. If you just remember towards the print, you'll get it right. And then this one is gonna go toward the print and I'm just gonna finger press those. I'm not gonna push or pull on the fabric because that will distort the bias. Okay, so now these are all one unit. We're gonna add our third row onto these. So I'm gonna bring this over to the sewing machine just like this and continue to add that quarter of an inch seam all the way down. Now my next one is ready to go with my solid. My last one is a solid, so I'm ready to go with a print. And break thread. Now we take these back over to our layout and we press again toward the print. So that way, with, with a white background, you can really see your seams underneath. So I like to press away from the white and that way I don't get that, that bulky seam underneath. So this makes this really, really simple. When we finger press like this and it's not broken, you can see this is a whole, if I don't flip it over, <laughs> this is a whole piece. And so this is gonna make it really nicely to just flip, let me get my hand out of the way, to flip this and take this over to the sewing machine. It kind of just helps you nest those seams together perfectly. So if you're a beginner quilter, nesting these seams is gonna help you line up where your intersections are. So this, it makes a more straight line in your nine patch. So I'm gonna flip those over and nesting means that one, this top one is gonna go this direction or whichever direction and then the second seam goes the opposite direction. If that makes any sense, so let me show you. Let me get it nested and you'll feel they kind of click together a little bit and let me see if my camera will focus on that. So I've got this seam going this direction and this bottom seam is going this direction and that just kind of clicks together. I can take that over to my sewing machine and sew a quarter of an inch. I wanna make sure when I get to this other seam here that it clicks as well, so it nests together as well. And remember, we're gonna keep the seams going away from the solid fabric. And nest those together. Okay. All right, let's take a look at that. So now, hopefully crossing our fingers, when I open this up, they match. So you can see this is kind of, see how they match up right here in this. 
That's what we're looking for. So that's why we nest those seams. So we'll do our last one again here. Okay, and just as easy as that, our nine patch is finished. But we're not gonna stop there in this tutorial. Let's say that you've got your nine patch made or whatever quilt block that you have that you're interested in turning it on point. So what that means is that you're gonna turn it to where it is the diamond shape. But if we wanna do that and not have Y seams or intersections where we're sewing half of a block and then coming back and sewing the other half later, we wanna make this square. So we need to fill in this negative space. So let me show you how to do that. First I'm gonna go and I'm gonna press this so it's nice and flat and we have a great measurement for when we're gonna square up our quilt block. So let me go and press that. Okay, so we are all nice and pressed flat and I've gotten all my seams going in different directions and that way we lay nice and flat. Now if you've sewn with your exact quarter of an inch um, you're going to look at about six and a quarter inches. So that's what I'm going to square my block up to. So now I'm at six and a quarter. But I, like I said, our tutorial is not going to stop there. I want us to figure out how to put this on point. And what that means is that we don't want our, our block to go straight from this block to this block. I'd like it to be on a diagonal, which is putting it on point which means we need to fill up this negative space. And this is important. It can also be a very frustrating point in quilting, um, ripping stitches out, lots of those things. I've had plenty of on point tutorials where I've just ripped the stitches out and completely just started over, whether I'm teaching someone how to do it uh, because we have not filmed one yet because I do get frustrated. So here's what I figured out and our mat comes in pretty essential for this step. Our mats aren't always a perfect square inch. If you lay a ruler on top of it, it may not exactly match up to the one inch. This one does seem to match up and you'll notice that some lines are more thick than others and so that makes a difference. So here's my guesstimation, and then at the end I'm going to tell you an alternative that I know is out there. So I'm going to just take a line. On, on this one it happens to be my 12 inch line. I'm going to line up the top point to my block and the bottom point to my block exactly on that 12 inch line. I'm not going to worry so much about what line it's on on this side. That would obviously be the 6 inch line. Um, if I were making it perfect straight. So let's just do that for the sake of argument. So I'm on the six inch line, the 12 inch line, the six inch line, and the 12 inch line. That doesn't matter so much as what I'm gonna teach you my trick for on point um, and making, cutting the exact right triangles that you're gonna need. Not exact, but it will help you in this process. So we're gonna use the squares on our mat. We obviously can't use up here. That's Alpha's just kind of rotary mat instructions and warnings. But I'm gonna use this side over here because essentially, if this is at six and a quarter, this is also at six and a quarter. So with my with my math over here, it's gonna I'm just going to multiply that by four. So let's use our squares as a good guideline, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count how many squares up it's going to take me to fill this negative space. Okay, so we're going to be making a triangle here. And I could measure this, this is six and a quarter. But if in my head it's harder for me to do the math of, okay, six and a quarter means what square is that? Because that's the center of my triangle. So I need to know, or the center of my square that's gonna, that I'm going to cut on the diagonal. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna count my squares. So I'm gonna take my fingers and just kind of line this direction and I'm gonna count. So this was one, two, three, four, five over here. I know I'm getting so close to being off camera. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So there's our square. One, two, three, four, five. So we've got a five inch square at least that I need to cut and I always add an inch onto that. So I'm going to need an, a six inch square cut on the diagonal one time to make this triangle right here 
and this triangle right here. Now if I need to fill these two, I'm just gonna do that twice. So for this particular block, I've counted one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, so a five by five square cut on the diagonal once would give me this triangle. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five on this side, so that would be the other half of this triangle. Is that making sense in the square? Um, comment down below if you're having questions or difficulty because turning a block on point can be difficult and this is just what I've learned works for me and I thought I'd share it with you. So even though it's a five by five inch square, I'm gonna add an inch and that gives me plenty of room to trim down my block after I've attached those. So I'm gonna need two six inch squares and that's gonna give me four um, on point triangles. So that's where you need your yardage. So I'm just gonna grab my yardage and I'm gonna cut a six inch um, by width of fabric strip. I'm gonna cut that by going to cut that down into six inch squares. So let's do that. So now I've got my two six inch squares and what you wanna do, just to double check yourself and make sure you've got enough fabric, I like to fold it on the diagonal and finger press. And I like to bring my quilt square over and put it on point just again, line it up on those lines just to make sure. And then lay your diagonal with the top of your block and make sure it extends a half an inch or even an inch on either side. This is going to allow you to attach all four triangles and this is on the bias so it will stretch. So make sure you're extra careful with that diagonal cut there or diagonal fold at this point. You wanna make sure it extends. That's gonna give us plenty of space to cut this whole block down when we are done with this unit. So that looks perfect to me. I've got about an inch hangover and that's what I really like to see. So I feel comfortable that I can lay my six inch squares out and cut them on the diagonal. This method, I know it does create a little more waste. I, I, I am aware of that. I would rather have a small extra amount of waste than I would to have ripped stitches if that makes sense. I don't want to have to rip my stitches out and have you know, potentially that bias being agitated and have to scrap an entire triangle. I would rather have a little bit of waste on the outside. So I'm going to use, um, I'm gonna line this up on my mat actually because I don't quite have a ruler that's big enough laying here. I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna use a bigger, this ruler here to line this up. There we go. And I'm just gonna cut from point to point. So I've got that. Move it up. Okay. So now with cutting those two squares, we have one, two, three, and four triangles, which is perfect. That's exactly what we need. The next thing you're gonna need, which I didn't mention in the um, materials that you'll need, but because this is such a bias and it does stretch here so easily, we want lots of pins. So flip your project the right way now. So we're, we're um, completely squared up here. We're going to attach each triangle. And what I like to do is take my triangle and push, press it in half and find that center mark and finger press that. Set that aside. I want to fold this side of my quilt block in half and finger press that and open that back up. Now this has a crease and our triangle has a crease as well and we're gonna line those up. And that allows you to be in the dead center. So let me grab some pins. So there's what your unit should look like. We're gonna sew a quarter of an inch. Make sure you go, I, I do start sewing all the way at the end. Even though I've got about an inch, that's okay. I just like to sew all the way to the end. And I'm gonna push this under here. Now I'm not gonna distress this. 
I'm just going to start at the corner and go to a quarter of an inch all the way around. I'm not gonna push or pull it through my sewing machine. I'm just going to let it sew. And as I get to a pin, I'll pull it out. And there we go. Now I'm going to carefully pull this open and just finger press right there, especially those ends. Now we're gonna flip it and go the other direction. There we go, and we're gonna add our next one. I'm actually gonna flip it all the way around and add to the opposite end. So again, fold this in half, finger press, fold this in half, and finger press and line up those markings and pin. You can also use binding clips if you don't want to put holes in the fabric like uh, sometimes sometimes with white fabric the holes you can see really really well so um, a lot of times with white I will use binding clips instead of pins and that's totally fine. Take your time Okay, there we go. I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine, sew a quarter of an inch, then I'll open it up and press and do the exact same thing for both sides. I'll see you back here when I'm done. Okay, so now we have all four signs, all four sides sewn on. And if you um, see, if you put your quilt block straight, our center quilt block is on point. So now our nine patch has gone from straight squares to this shape. And I love a good on point quilt square. I just think it really accentuates whatever the quilt design is. This is really, really simple. And now what I'll do is give this a really good press. I want to be careful, again, not to agitate the bias. So I'll be careful with the steam and things like that. Um, but this is turning out so well. So let me go ahead and give this a press. And then we'll talk about how to trim it down and what you can do with an on-point quilt block. Okay, so now I have everything pressed. The important thing is so that you don't lose these points, you wanna stay at least a quarter of an inch away. At this point, I do like to trim about, I would say a half an inch away. That way it gives me a quarter of an inch when I'm completely finished. So what I would do now is line up my ruler a quarter, I'm sorry, a half an inch away from that center point. And I'm going to also line up this angle. And so I'm going to trim this bit here. I'm going to do that slowly because I do have a smaller ruler, so I'm going to make sure I line that up well. So again, line that and line up that, those markings. Okay. And trim that little bit off. So this is the waist and we'll have this little bit of waist from each side and this is about a quarter of an inch. So I, I realize all four sides that's an inch of fabric that we're wasting. This just, this makes sense in my head exactly how to do this part and so I do feel like this, this method works for me. Here in a minute, as soon as I get this all trimmed up, here in a minute, we're going to talk about different ways, resources that are out there that can help you to determine exactly what size fabric you'll need for uh, your triangles. And there is our on point nine patch. 
Now, you can do this with any quilt patch. It doesn't have to be a nine patch in the center. You can do it with any quilt block. So if you uh, maybe made the pineapple blocks from the foundation paper that we did with our last tutorial and you wanna put those on point, you can absolutely do that using this method. You can um, take, maybe you just have one or two quilt blocks that you have left over. Those make great um, maybe pot holders or just small wall hangings for the kitchen. It looks really cute as a little collage. You can take and put those on on point and you've got this solid fabric around the outside that really accentuates the center quilt block. Throw some binding around it and you've got a really cute pot holder or a hot pad or anything that you would like. So this is really simple. Now this is how my brain works, but let's say you're going, no way, this does not work for me. I do not like an inch of waste. I, I can't make that work. There are resources out there for you. There are lots of charts and things available that show you, okay, if you have a six and a quarter or six and a half inch block, here are the triangles that you need to cut, or here are the squares that you need to cut. There are other YouTube tutorials out there that show you different methods. This is what works for me. One of those methods I wanna tell you about, Fat Quarter Shop just came out with, um, you know, I think it's actually been around for a while. I don't know that they just came out with this. This is something I printed and I laminated it and it just kind of stays in my binder of random quilt uh, printables that I have. So this is the On Point Quilt Setting Cheat Sheet for side setting and corner setting triangles. So what this says, I've laminated this, so you might get a little bit of a glare. We'll link it down below, but it's just a free printable from Fat Quarter Shop that they say, okay, here is a bunch of different finished sizes of quilt blocks. Here's the traditional method. So if you're doing side setting, which means you're, you're cutting a square and you're cutting it on both diagonals, so you're side setting those triangles so that your diagonal is actually not on the bias, here's the squares you would want, need to cut. Um, if you are doing the corner setting triangles, which is what I showed you today, which means you're cutting a square and then cutting it one time on the diagonal, here's the measurements for that. And then they go into detail with Kimberly's method and what she cuts, and those are just a hair different. Okay, so that's just one method that I like to use. My brain just works really well with the outside squares and adding an inch. Then I know I need to cut on the diagonal one time, and that is corner setting triangles. Like I said, we're gonna link that free printable for you down below. Check Pinterest, check other YouTube. If this, this method doesn't work for you or the cheat sheet doesn't work for you, find something that does. The on point, the on point setting of quilt blocks does not need to be hair pulling. I mean, it can be really, really simple. I was very frustrated with it at first. I've wanted to do this tutorial for a while, but in my brain, I just couldn't make it work. Even the cheat sheet was a little hard for me to understand at first. So if you have questions or you have a different method that you would like to use, please continue the conversation down below by commenting. We love when our subscribers kind of interact with each other and I love to interact with you all as well. And we can just kind of continue that conversation of what works for you. Thank you so much for joining us in the hive today and learning this really simple nine patch quilt square turned on point. I hope that you found my method useful or some of the other resources that I shared with you. We would love, like I said earlier, we would love to continue the conversation down below if you have other methods that might work for you as well. Thank you so much for joining us on The Hive today. Until next time. Mm -hmm.